Remastering or remaking games has always been a delicate balance. At the minimum, it is expected that games are going to run at more modern resolutions and modern frame rates, but on the other end of the spectrum, you could also expect quality of life changes, balance updates, or even new content added to these games, whether that comes from totally new levels, new maps, new weapons, etc., depending on the game, or it comes in the case of content that may have been cut from the final release of these games when they were launched. The quote-unquote proper way to remaster a game is a very muddy discussion as games have gone all different routes over the years to various degrees of success. Today, we're going to be specifically talking about Halo the Master Chief Collection though, and kind of how 343 has handled it with this collection. So when the Master Chief Collection was revealed in 2014, 343 touted that the collection was going to play just as we remember them. And this is a statement that has gotten them lots and lots of flack over the years. Mostly due to a lot of the issues that the Master Chief Collection had and still has in specific games. But also, more recently, due to changes that 343 has been making to the collection. From the get-go, all the games were enhanced to play at higher resolutions and frame rates than their original releases. And now with the PC and the Xbox Series X, even over 60 FPS. This alone has led to changes in how the game feels and plays just due to the advancement of technology. Higher frame rates specifically allow players to be more accurate than they were back in the OG days of Halo 3 when they were barely chugging at 30 FPS. And not only that, input delay on an Xbox One is massively less than the original Xbox 360 and it only gets better from there once you hop over to PC or the new generation of consoles. Also, you throw in the addition of FOV sliders on both PC and the new consoles, and you start to see the many advantages a player can have playing the Master Chief Collection over the original versions. This alone was going to change how these games played, but you could make the argument that this still fits the mold of how you remember it. Sure, if you compare the original versions to the MCC version side by side, the resolution and frame rate differences alone are going to make them easy to differentiate. However, if you aren't doing a stare and compare right next to each other, and instead are comparing your nostalgic memories of these original titles to your current experiences on the Master Chief Collection, then this could do the trick. It might actually function as how you remembered it, because when you look back on nostalgic memories, you always remember things a lot better than they actually were. Plus, let's be real, in 2020, nobody wants to play a game that's not even at 720p getting less than 30 FPS. Gaming has advanced well past that, and so it was almost a necessity that these technological updates were made to the collection. Overall, most players are totally on board with these technological advances, and there's not too much discourse here. However, as we move into the other changes that have been made to the Master Chief Collection, there begins to be more and more people who oppose the changes, and this poses the question. Should 343 be adding or changing things in these legacy titles, or are they ruining the legacy of these older Halo games? This is extremely relevant now, as of the news last week, we found out that in December of 2021, online services for the Xbox 360 are being shut down. This means that you will no longer be able to play games like Halo 3, Halo Reach, and Halo 4 online, just like you can no longer play Halo 2 online. Once this happens, you won't be able to tell someone who dislikes the changes that 343 has made to go play OG, because OG won't exist anymore. It literally will just be the Master Chief Collection if you want to play online that continues to uphold the legacy of these Halo games. And with that, we do want it to be an accurate representation of these games, right? If a new fan gets into Halo after trying Halo Infinite later next year and decides they want to experience the old games and hops back onto the Master Chief Collection, they should be able to experience some of the same things that we all experienced back in the day, right? And that is where we hit that line. What should 343 be changing in these games? Have they done too much? Or have they not done enough work on the Master Chief Collection? Before continuing on, I do just want to briefly talk on that point I brought up about how the online services for the Xbox 360 are being shut down. This is really sad as for many, these games were their childhoods, but it was going to come at some point. I know some of you were upset about this, but it was inevitable. At some point, it's just not worth the money to keep the servers running for these games. I know personally that I haven't played any of the 360 Halo titles in years, 
but it is my understanding that it was getting harder and harder to find lobbies for these games, which I mean, makes sense due to their increasing age, despite the fact that most of them, or all of them I think, might be playable on backwards compatibility. For many players, launching up the Master Chief Collection is just an easier or even a more enjoyable experience if they're looking to just chill and play some of these Halo titles. Switching gears back to the discussion about changes to the Master Chief Collection, over the past year or so this has crept up more and more as the addition of the Collection to PC has almost turned it into a live service game of sorts other than the fact that it lacks microtransactions. Like many other live service games though, we are getting somewhat regular updates adding cosmetics along with other gameplay altering features. In the near future, Season 5 of the Master Chief Collection will hit, adding in some new cosmetics we are going to talk about, and 343 has mentioned that they have 10 seasons planned with the future past that unknown. Six more seasons of content for the MCC is a lot of content. A lot of skins, armors, possibly maps, possibly new game types, etc. Over the next year or so that these seasons roll out, we are going to get a lot of new stuff, along with some older legacy content maybe being brought back to the collection, and this is a discussion that's going to come back up time and time again. Has 343 ruined X Halo game by adding X feature or X weapon or X armor? So let's start by kind of backing up and sort of going chronologically, and I'll try and hit all the major times that 343 has added content that changes these OG games in mostly good ways in my opinion, but bad ways to some other people. From the very start, we already talked about the base technological advances, so I won't retread that. From there, most of the changes have happened since the Master Chief Collection has hit PC, as it sort of reinvigorized the MCC, not necessarily in player base as that still primarily sits on Xbox, but more so it's just given 343 a reason to start working on the Master Chief Collection again, and adding new content into it. So starting off here, the first thing that really comes to mind when we talk about the changes that 343 has made to the collection was the addition of Halo CE skins during Season 1, and then later on now we've gotten skins in Halo 4 and Halo 3, etc. I know for some they weren't a fan of having skins in these Halo games as other than Halo 4 and Halo 5 which isn't in the collection. None of these older Halo games had skins back in the day, so this was a pretty big change. However, 343 was nice enough to add a toggle, so if you don't want to see skins in your older Halo games, you can turn those off and you don't have to see them at all. This was a great compromise as it kept people who didn't want to see the skins happy, and still allowed people who wanted skins into the game to be able to have them. Personally, I'm a big fan of these skins being in the game, it just kind of fills out the content for these seasons, and it gives us new things to unlock, even though I will say, admittedly, I don't think the skins that we've gotten for the different MCC titles are really that great. They're not terrible by any means, but if we're being honest, they're mostly just kind of recolors and retextures for the existing skins. I don't know if I was necessarily expecting more, but I just wanted to say that these skins that we've gotten don't necessarily do anything super innovative or super out there, they're kind of just par for the course. The next major change that 343 kind of made was when Halo 2 Anniversary hit and we got Forge, they updated Forge in Halo 2 Anniversary and then later Reach and 4 to have new items and vehicles, etc. Now this is a change that's pretty much been unilaterally loved as, I mean, it just gives you more features if you're forging. They also did some quality of life updates for Forge in some of the older games. Specifically, Halo 3 comes to mind as you can now more easily phase objects together where if you forged back in the day, you had to do these weird glitches with teleporters and restarting the round and all this other stuff to be able to get two boxes to go together. Now you just select an option when you're placing the box and you can move them around a lot easier. So these changes to forge are definitely great. It allows creative people to make better maps and it allows people who want to forge just to have an easier time and a better time doing it. Great overall addition or change to the Master Chief Collection. The next feature that was added that I want to talk about was when Halo 3 ODST dropped. When Halo 3 ODST dropped, we got weapons from Halo 3 ODST added into Halo 3, and then likewise we actually had things like the battle rifle added from Halo 3 into ODST as it was not originally part of that game. This is another change that I personally really enjoyed. We had the new pistol, the brute plasma rifle, and the silenced SMG all added into Halo 3, and at the time when these were all added, they were all a part of the Recon Slayer playlist, which is a playlist that you spawned in with these weapons and the weapons on the maps had been kind of updated to fit this theme. This was a lot of fun and even though eventually I got kind of sick of using that pistol, 
It added new experiences to Halo 3, which is a game that's pretty old. Like I said, you also got the battle rifle in Halo 3 ODST from Halo 3, and that's pretty cool. I personally haven't played a whole ton of ODST since it came out, but the little bit I played was pretty fun to be able to use the battle rifle. Another big change around the same time was 343 actually updated the way that the hit registration worked in Halo 3 to try and fix some of the issues that they had been having with hit registration since the collection launched. Now I won't go into all the changes to the hit registration specifically as they have an entire blog post that outlines everything that they did to get to this point, but long story short, it makes it much easier to kill people in Halo 3 as not only are your bullets registering better than they were in the Master Chief Collection before, you also don't really have to lead your shots nearly as much, which just cuts down the room for player error and makes it easier to clean people up. It's not necessarily at the levels of like Halo Reach and Halo 2 Anniversary when it comes to getting lasered cross map, but it is a lot lot closer than it previously was especially in the Master Chief Collection. Now as I kind of mentioned earlier, it's been years since I played original Halo 3, so I don't know necessarily how the hit registration update of the MCC compares to the original Halo 3, but I do know I have seen people come out and say that they don't really like the hit registration update in Halo 3 because it makes the game a lot easier. And while I kind of agree, it definitely does make it easier to kill people, it just makes the game a lot more consistent and a lot less frustrating to play, so I was a huge fan of the hit registration updates also. But as you can see as we go through these changes to the Master Chief Collection, any time that 343 decides to add new features in or change existing features, there's always going to be some people that like the way it was before or just don't like the way that the new additions change those original games. And this is where we get into recently the Season 5 update, which included new Halo 3 armor and some new Halo Reach armor that had been cut from the original game. So in Halo Reach, the new armor that we are getting is the Akis or Akis variants that I don't know how to pronounce, but these were helmets that were cut from the original Halo Reach. And overall, these have pretty good reception. I don't necessarily know if I love them, but the main thing is that they fit pretty well with the aesthetic of Halo Reach, which is why you really haven't seen any backlash related to these. Now moving over to Halo 3 is where there has been a lot of backlash, and that comes for multiple reasons. Not only is 343 adding in new armors to Halo 3, they also changed the existing undersuits in Halo 3 and the feet for some reason. So first things first, I'll say that while I actually kind of like the new undersuits, I think they look pretty nice. I think that by default, those probably should have been left the same that they were before, and then the new undersuits would just be options that you could pick from. I don't know why it forced the new default undersuit to be different than the old one, and I don't really know why your feet are now smaller than they were before. As we get into the armors though, these come from Halo Online, and if you don't know what that is, it was this free-to-play Halo game being developed for the Russian market that was cancelled before it ever came out, and eventually it was modded into El Dorito that kind of played like Halo 3. But these armors specifically come from the original Halo Online build and not El Dorito. So I have seen some people saying that the El Dorito modders are the ones that created these armors. They are not. These are from the original Halo Online, so they were probably created by Saber. Now the first thing that you'll notice when you look at these armors is they don't really fit the aesthetic of Halo 3. They have a lot more of that style that you would see in Halo 4 or maybe even Halo 5. And that's why a lot of people are upset, because they think that these armors specifically kind of ruin Halo 3. And this is where I'm probably going to say something that many of you are going to disagree with, and that is that I don't mind these armors being added. I don't necessarily think they look that great, I think a lot of them are pretty ugly actually, but when you're in a game, it's very seldom that you're actually examining your enemy's armor or your teammate's armor. You're just running around the map trying to play Halo, trying to shoot people. I really think it's overblown how much people have said that these armors ruin Halo 3 and ruin the aesthetic of Halo 3. I personally think that it's pretty cool that we're still getting new armors for Halo 3, a game that came out in 2007. Now could these armors have been added to a different game like Halo 2 Anniversary or Halo 4 instead? Probably, they might have fit the aesthetic a little better, but the thing that people need to understand is that the reason they're being added into Halo 3 is Halo Online ran on the ODST engine. So just like the weapons that we got added into Halo 3 that came from ODST, these armors are probably a lot easier to port back into Halo 3 than they are to try and port into some of the other games like Halo 2 Anniversary or Halo 4. 
Now, obviously, the main solution that a lot of people have been asking for, and 343 has even come out and said that they're looking at it, is if we had a toggle option to kind of make it so that you didn't see any of these new armors. Maybe it throws default Master Chiefs all over the game or whatever it does. Just some type of toggleable option, just like the skins. So if you don't want to see these new armors in your game, you don't have to. I'm definitely pro toggle, but I don't actually even think it's something that 343 has to do. Now, if they do go ahead and they implement the toggle, I'm all for it. But to be honest, I think that the people asking for the toggle are probably the vocal minority as opposed to the active majority of players actually playing the Master Chief Collection. I think a lot of them either don't care that these armors are being added in, wouldn't notice, or maybe they even like some of the armors and they want to use them. I don't know how many of them would actually go in and turn on the toggle to turn everyone into a default Master Chief. I could be totally off there, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. And I would love to see if they added a toggle for 343 to come out and tell us how many people actually used it although they obviously won't, but that's kind of my thoughts on these new Halo 3 armors. As you can see though, the little addition of just adding in Halo 3 armors that don't necessarily fit the aesthetic of the game has caused a lot of backlash toward 343, and that is what we might see going forward as they continue to add new things into the game. And so you kind of have to think to yourself, how much should 343 be changing in these games? Should they, like they currently are, specifically stick to things like armors and skins and maybe new weapons where applicable? Like we could see the DMR that's in Halo Online, maybe that gets added into Halo 3 like the ODST pistol. Or maybe we even see the Halo Online maps added into Halo 3 or Halo 2 Anniversary or Halo 4, whatever they wanted to do, as that would give us more maps to play in the collection. What I also wonder though, is what other future additions could they do to the collection that would enhance the games but these additions or changes will get you further from the original releases of these titles and so i'll just throw out a couple ideas so in halo 4 a lot of people don't like how there's no d-scope and they use flinch is that something that 343 should update i don't necessarily know the answer to that but i know i would enjoy halo 4 more as a game if it had d-scope instead of flinch Another one for me, and I know this will be a lot more contentious, is maybe they rework the way that the DMR works completely in Halo Reach so it's not dependent on the RNG bloom that it currently is in the title update and vanilla settings of the game. Maybe they rework it to shoot slower, or maybe they rework it to have a predictable recoil pattern instead of the RNG bloom. Again, that's another change that I personally would like and would make me enjoy Halo Reach more, but you are definitely starting to change the game more and more and get it further from its original release. These are the questions that I wanted to propose though. As we get more seasons of Halo, the Master Chief Collection content, and as we play it over the next year or so, what kind of changes do we want to see? Do we want the changes to be purely cosmetic with maybe a weapon or map here and there? Or would we want to see 343 try and tackle some of the really talked about issues that we have with some of these titles, like the ones I mentioned. Overall, I'm a big fan of the changes that 343 has been making to the Master Chief Collection. As someone who still plays the game regularly, the new content gives me a reason to care. I played tons of the OG Halo games in the past, and I don't want to necessarily play more of exactly that. New skins, armors, weapons, and hell, maybe even a map in the future give me incentive to return to the game other than to just get my nostalgia fix here and there. Now I understand the importance of maintaining the art style and legacy of these Halo games, but we have to accept that the Master Chief Collection is basically a live service game now, and live service games get updates adding new content. Some of this is going to change things up, and some is going to fit right in like the new Halo Reach armor. But in my opinion, the huge backlash over some of the ugly armors being added into Halo 3 was really overblown. Like I said though, if they end up going the toggle route, I'm totally on board, that doesn't bother me at all. But I just think that all these people that were doom and glooming Halo 3 as if this was ruining Halo 3, we're overblowing it a little bit. Sure, these armors don't necessarily fit into Halo 3, and maybe every once in a while you'll play against someone using one of the new armors and you're not a fan of that, or maybe you dislike how the new undersuit looks. All of that's totally reasonable, but I just don't think that it ruins the game like some people were saying it was. Anyways, that kind of ends the video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. 
I should hopefully have another video up this week, a more fun and laid back video. So hopefully you guys check that one out. I'm aiming for a Christmas release. Other than that, you can catch me over on Twitch where I stream sometimes, and you can also follow me on Twitter. And as always, I'll see you all next time.